take out your Bibles and turn to the book to the book of Mark chapter 2, I believe it is. The book of Mark chapter 2. And um, we're going to talk today about the topic of fasting. Okay, we're on a 21-day fast. Now again, like I said last week, I talked about finances last week. And it was a great response. And as your pastor, I will never shrink back from teaching you the full counsel of the Bible. So finances is one area that I'm going to speak on it. And I'm going to speak on it with freedom. I'm going to speak on it with boldness. I'm going to speak on it with no matter who looks at me suspiciously or who looks at me trying to question my motives. I, I could, I'm 55 years old now. I could care less. Okay. But... But, trust me, as we're building a foundation this year in our church where, you know, uh, finances was last week. This is the third week, third Sunday of the month, speaking on fasting because we're five days into it. And so, if you haven't joined it yet, there's still plenty of time for you to do it. Hopefully today would hopefully motivate you to do it. It's a Daniel fast. It's, you know, it's like a, it's a pitch everyone can hit. It's like an, un, it's like a like a little lob like I play with you know my grandson here he's two years old here boom and then he hits it I don't pitch to him fast I give him a pitch he could hit and when it comes to a Daniel fast this is a pitch we could all hit and so it just takes a little discipline it just takes a made up mind because if you don't make up your mind you know uh, in times of weakness but there's forgiveness I remember the first time you came to church Right, Lonzo? And I confess, just like you did today. I was like, hey, we just got back from Mexico, and I, I blew it. You know? And Alonzo's all, I like that guy. My confession won him to Jesus. Come on, somebody. So, so, you know, hey, it happens. You know, we all fall short, right? We're over here trying to judge poor Alonzo. He's over here letting it all out in front of hundreds of people today. Uh, so, anyway... Uh, it's a pitch we could all hit. I want to talk to you today on Mark chapter 2, verse 18 and 19, I believe the scripture is. And it says, uh, the disciples of John and of the Pharisees were fasting. And then they came to Jesus and they said, why do you, or excuse me, why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples don't, Jesus? And Jesus said to them, can the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom will not be taken, will be taken away from them, and then they will fast in those days. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, or else the new piece will pull away from the old, and the tear will be made even worse. And no one puts new wine in old wineskin or else the new wine will burst with new wineskins or with the wineskins and then the wine will be spilled and the wineskins are ruined but new wine someone say new wine must be put into new wineskins father bless your word for the next few moments in jesus name amen you can go ahead and be seated here today this is a really really um a really powerful teaching if you apply it to your life and by the end of the sermon you see we put the steps here um, and they're not done but I wanted to put them up today because we're going to recarpet them uh, within the next week or two and before we carpet them we have some markers that are already up here in the basket and as the altar call today you, we're going to invite you to come up and you could put your family's name You'll be able to put a prayer request. You'll be put someone that you're praying for, or maybe a promise that God has given you, some kind of something. You're going to write it, and uh, it's going to be part of our altar forever. And then when we carpet it, you'll know, and we'll all know, that there's a promise of one of my loved ones, or there's a promise of you know something that I'm believing God for. It, it could be it could be anything. Whatever God puts on your heart, you're gonna you're gonna put it there. And uh, you're gonna, we're going to be believing God. So every time we make an altar call, 
Every time someone's up here praying, every time we host a regional event or a multi-regional event or any kind of fresh wind conference, you will know in the back of your mind, there lies my promise right there on that step. And so that's what we wanted to do today. So that's why it's like it is, but that's the method behind the madness this morning. I want to talk to you about uh, fasting this morning and uh, why do we fast? Um, you know, it's not really a commandment. It's not really something that, you know, uh, uh, you know, like like communion or baptism. But but it is. I'm telling you right now from experience, one of the greatest things that we can have about our life is when we begin to take on, you know, a life of fasting. And God said, "Humble yourself in the scriptures before me, and then I will exalt you." So we cannot humble ourselves in fasting um, and, then, and then God not exalt in your life, okay? There are places that you and I are supposed to go that your flesh is not able to take you. But when you begin to fast, yeah, things will begin to happen and break off your life. There's also a scripture uh, in the Bible where, uh, and I'm probably going to talk about it, I'm definitely getting ahead of myself. I'm going to pause right there and not get ahead of myself today and stick to the plan here today. But uh, once I start flowing, sometimes it just starts flowing. But I, I, I think, I think I'm going to just pause that for a minute. So someone say, humble yourself. When we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, in due season, he will begin to exalt areas of your life. I believe there are some diseases that will be healed when we begin to fast. I believe there's some infections that will be able to be healed when we begin to fast. I, begin to, I, I believe there's some surgeries that some people may have coming up here today that, that, that can be, you know, uh, not, not, not gone to, perhaps, in a supernatural way because of fasting. Fasting removes illnesses. It removes drug addiction. It removes alcoholism. Fasting plays a huge role in supernatural healings. And in our opening scripture, we see here that Jesus is asked why his disciples are not fasting. That's like, you know, wow. The ultimate like confrontation that you would have the nerve to ask Jesus why his disciples are not fasting. And he simply replies to them and tells them uh, the parable and he tells them that while the bridegroom is here, you know, um, uh, uh, no fasting happens. In other words, when you're at a wedding and you're, and you're, you're, you're feasting, there's not going to be no fasting. You know, so he starts, he starts cutting through their, their mindset. And he starts cutting through them because they were asking because they were trying to make themselves look better. They're trying to say, we fast. John the Baptist's disciples fast. The Pharisees fasts. And Jesus simply says that you fast out of religion. Like you fast because you're trying to show off in front of everybody. You fast because you want to, you know, you want to be, you know, looked upon as someone holy and someone, you know, better than everyone else. You know, you fast you know, because of all of that. He says, but my disciples are not fasting right now because I'm with them. I'm with them. They don't need to fast right now, he tells them. He says, but there's going to be a day when I'm not with them. And then, and then they'll fast. And the reason why he's telling them that, in a nutshell, is simply because when I'm not here, they're going to long for me. They're going to want me. They're going to be so in love with me. I would dare say calling it lovesick. You ever been lovesick before? Three of you. You ever been lovesick before? I know someone's got to play the DVD back a few centuries, but, 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 but remember when you were lovesick? Eighth grade, seventh grade, talk to me. Sixth grade, your little crush that you had. Oh, I love him. He's so cute. I love him. Can't even make his own bed. Can't even make his own cereal. Can't even iron his own clothes. But you love him. Ooh, I'm, I'm preaching now. Oh, I love her. She's so cute. Yeah, she's a mess. 
And you were so in love that you couldn't even eat. Jesus said, that's the kind of love that when I'm not here, my disciples are going to long for me. Because they're so in love with me that they, that they are going to be so lovesick for me. Because, but, 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 and, and, and they are they're going to long for me so much that they're going to they're gonna fast. So he was basically saying, get on with your religious self. Get on with your little, you know, thing that sounds good. Get on with your little, you know, Instagram post and quote and this and that. He says, he says one day they will fast, but they're going to fast for all the right reasons. They're going to fast because they want me. They're, they're going to fast because they long for my presence. They're going to fast because they're going to be so desperate for me. They're going to fast because they're so sick and tired of being sick and tired. Ooh, I'm preaching again. Come on, they're so tired of the same old, same old. They're so tired of the same religious type of activities. I'm sick and tired. Come on, somebody. When my wife and I began to fast, like seriously, like uh, it was in 2020, when we were sick and tired of being sick and tired. We were at the senior center then, and we were sick and tired of just being sick and tired. We had gotten a little religious. We had gotten, you know, a little frustrated. We had gotten a little bit in the natural. Now, we were praying, and we were reading. We were not in sin. You take that little judgy look off you. <laughs> but we were just dry. We were just not tapping into some wells. We had become, you know, just, again, just at a place where, like, there's got to be more than what we're experiencing, man. Like, how come, you know, we're not getting, like, a personal breakthrough? How come I don't feel the joy of the Lord? How come I don't feel passion? How come I talk to me today? How come I'm just, like, bored in church? And I'm the pastor. Come on, somebody. How come I'm not happy with people getting saved? How come I'm not happy with men and women coming in the home? How come I'm not happy seeing deliverances? And come on, somebody, how come? And, 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 and we went to the regional meetings like we do every year in January in Mexico. And it was there that my wife took notice of Pastor Alan Georgina's daughter, Zanel, walking around Puerto Vallarta with a fasting book. And I'm like, who carries around a fasting book in Puerto Vallarta when this is the land of plenty, like plenty of tacos, plenty of, you name it, lobster and steak. Come on, somebody, all that, the good life. Like, how can you be denying your flesh in paradise? And, uh, you know, so we came home, and Helica got the book, and she, she kicked it off, to be honest with you. She began to kick it off, and I began to notice you know, uh, her not joining me in some delicacies that we would normally like to enjoy together. And she, you know, just really didn't announce it. She didn't, you know, warn me. She just got into this book, and she began to separate her life. And I begin to take notice, and I begin to say, hey, you know, like, you're looking like, you're looking, something's up with you. You know, like, I could see a difference in your life. I could just see it. I can't put my finger on it, but something's breaking through in your life and so then it motivated me and she began to tell me and long story short we began to uh we began to add this uh, not not add but we began to have a lifestyle of lifestyle of of, of of fasting and 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 there were some things that we learned along that we learned along the way and we not only wanted to have a personal life of fasting but we wanted to also challenge the church to begin to fast and uh there are some things I want to give you today that, that really will benefit you um, and hopefully motivate you and hopefully spark an area in your life that you haven't thought about uh, today. And I'm telling you right now, great things will happen. I'm not just up here telling you something I read out of a book. I'm not up here just telling you something that I listened to on, you know, uh, TikTok or, you know, uh, some podcast. What I'm bringing you here today is what we've experienced and what the church has experienced. And I would even dare say the auditorium we're sitting in here today is a result of a praying and a fasting church. So let me give you some real quick wrong reasons to fast. Number one wrong reason to fast is we should not fast to obtain merit from God. So just get in good with God. I need to get in good with God, so I need to fast. Well, 
you've already blew it. You might as well go ahead and eat. See, we do not get spiritual credit to be earned by performance of righteous acts to ensure future benefit. Okay, so this is not, the, not what I'm trying to give you today. But we've got to cut through some of these mindsets this morning because that was one of my first thoughts. Ah, oh, when I fast, God is going to be just so pleased with me. And he will. And he does. But that's not the right, that's not the only motive here. See, the only one, uh, there are only one thing that gives us merit with God, and that's the blood of Jesus. See, the only thing that causes us to be free is the blood of Jesus. Number two, um, wrong reason to fast is we should not fast just to lose weight. Although that is a good byproduct of fasting. Like, that is a good one. Like, I've been weighing myself for the last five days, and uh, I'm, I'm kind of mixed up, you know. Like, it goes down, then it goes back up, and all this crazy stuff. So, anyway... This point is for me today. Maybe it's not for you, but it's for me. Is that you should not do it just to, just to lose weight. Uh, this is not a Christian diet. Oh, I'm on the Daniel fast. I'm on a little Christian diet now. No, you're already, you're already messing up. See, it's a plus if it happens. Come on, somebody. Someone told, told me the other day, oh, I lost, like, I, I lost some weight. And I go, yeah, your earlobe looks smaller. Come on, somebody. Yeah, they didn't laugh. They got a little mad at me, but. <laughs> but remember, we're fasting for spiritual purposes, okay? I'm, we're fasting for spiritual purposes. Another reason why we should, uh, another reason why, uh, wrong reason to fast is that you should not fast to be noticed by others. Look at me, I'm fasting. Although we're on a corporate fast, that's okay, all right, and, you know, all that. But we're not telling the world to look at us. We're simply just trying to bring it before you, and we're trying to do it corporately. Now, what's done in secret fasting is, I'm not going to talk about really that today. I, I might a little later, but, but, but there's a power in a corporate fast too. And if I could just get the church conditioned to fast, then when we in the future, you know, have a one-day water fast, it's possible you'll, you'll, you won't ease through it because it's hard. I'll tell you, one day is like tough, the toughest, the toughest, hardest, grueling thing I've ever, I know it sounds good when you're not doing it. Try it. Oh, God, some of you probably lose your job. You probably lose your testimony. Probably, yeah, because you just get so... Anyway, I want to make it motivating today. So we don't do it and go around acting like we're spiritual. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm fasting. You're a heathen. Get away from me. You're less than. I'm spiritual. I'm the Bible answer man. Get away from me. You're filthy. You're... In fact, the goal with the fast is for you to decrease... So that he can increase. The goal of the fast is not for you to get more of God, but it's for God to get more of you. And that's a good one right there, boy. That was. Okay, now let me give you, I'm gonna give you the major changes that happen, and this is my the brunt of my sermon here today. And hopefully it'll motivate you to fast. Three major changes that fasting will bring to your life. I would call them benefits this morning. Number one, benefit. Of fasting is that it will bring a spirit of release upon your life it'll bring a spirit of release upon your life what do I mean by that I mean that there are some strongholds in our lives there are some spirits in our life that will not release our life from us and from our loved ones until someone gets down to business and starts praying and fasting It'll bring a release. It has brought so much release upon my life, my marriage, my family, the church. I'm telling you right now, when you begin to take, you know, a step of faith and ask the Lord to help you to fast, 
I'm telling you, there are some strongholds that you don't even know that may be possibly on your life. I could probably, you know, uh, give some to you. I could probably share some with you. I don't know, but only you know sometimes some of these things that are upon your life. Matthew 17, verse 14 and 21 uh, says that there was a family that had a son that was demon-possessed. We know the story. Most of us know the story. And the disciples tried to cast the demon out of the boy, but they could not do it. They had no success. But I love the fact that the father initiated the miracle, and he said, Jesus, your disciples tried to cast the demon out of my son, but they could not do it. Can you come over here? The father initiates it. The father says, I need you to come to my family. I need you to come to my child. I need you to come to my help. And, 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 and the child could not help himself because he was bound. Jesus comes into the picture, and then the miracle begins to happen. And, 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 and Jesus lays hands on him, and Jesus prays for him. And the Bible says that the, that the child was loosened from these demons, and he was healed, and he was delivered. Come on, somebody. And then, and then, and then the disciples ask him, why couldn't we do it, Jesus? Why couldn't we, like, deliver this kid? What's wrong? And he says, he says, not only because of your unbelief, but he tells the disciples, because this kind only comes from praying and fasting. There are some things in our life. There are some things in our genes. There are some things in our family. There are some things in our legacy. There are some things in our life that, my friend, that are still uh, on you. They're still in your DNA. They're still a part of your natural bend. There are certain things that are still a part of your life. I'm here to help somebody here today and hopefully unlock something here today and, 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 and call it out this morning and say, you are but one meal away from breaking that thing through. I come against divorce in my bloodline. I come against abandonment in my bloodline. I come against drug addiction in my bloodline. I come against dying early in my bloodline. I come against, I come against illnesses and cancer and all of that. Because when I began to fast, something began to unlock. Something was released inside of my family. Come on, somebody. And even inside of this church. But this kind only comes out through praying Fasting, my friend, you are but one happy meal away. You are but one slice of pizza away. You are but one, you know, Taco Bell away. You are but one, you know, you fill in the blank away. So pushing away from that thing and saying, I long for you, God. I'm tired of this coming against me. I'm tired of this battle that I have. I'm, 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 I tried everything else. Come on, somebody. I tried counseling, and you should go to counseling. I've tried, you know, this, and you should try all of these things. But have you tried fasting? Ooh, because that's not popular, is it? The doctors won't tell you that. But Dr. Sanchez is telling you that today. And I'm telling you, there are some things in your life that will be, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself, that will be released. They will be released upon your life. See, as a parent or a grandparent, what do you do when it seems like Satan has your child held captive? What do you do when they are on drugs, when they are on alcohol, when they're hanging out with the wrong crowd? I'm telling you what I do, I fast. Oh, Jesus, I fast. I get, I, like, I'm just coming off a mean one right now. Like, a mean one on all fronts. Devil trying to come after my kids. Devil trying to come after my family. Devil trying to come after my church. Devil trying to come after my mind. Devil trying to come after my emotions. Devil trying to mess with me on all fronts. Talk to me today. Devil trying to bring up some old stuff inside of my life. Devil trying to speak louder than him. Come on, somebody. Trying to hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me. Well, guess what, devil? We are on a 21-day Daniel fast. And, 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 and you'll get your hands off my child. You will get your hands off of my grandbabies. You will get your hands off of my daughter. You will get your hands off of my son. You will get your hands off of my marriage. You will get your hands off of my church. You will get your hands off of the leaders in this year. You will get your hands off everybody in this place. You will get your hands off. Why? I don't just pray it away, but I fast it away. And I say, God, this one only comes out through praying and fasting. And I will act a fool. I will act a fool. You should act a fool too. Posting all that food. The devil loves it. Keep eating. Yes. Do it. Go for it. Feed the flesh. Don't fast. They're tripping. 
Your pastor's tripping. Only he can do it. Only a few chosen could do it. No, my friend. No, 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 no. You can do it. You can do it. A carrot never tastes so good. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm going to put that on a piece of pizza. Ugh. It's been a few weeks. They make now cauliflower uh, crust. Is that legal? I got to be careful what I say. Lonzo left that out. It was cauliflower. I think it's legal. I'm a, anyway, pastor did it. There's something that can break the demonic assignment on your family. The enemy does not want you to know this. If you fast and pray, nothing is too hard for the Lord. Isaiah 58 shows us, you can read it on your own time, that fasting can help people who suffer from addictions, sexual immorality, and basically those that cannot even control their flesh. And that's pretty much 100% of us in this place, including me. Okay? And when you fast, things will break off of you. And your spirit man will begin to get stronger than your flesh man. See that? So easy to follow the flesh, yeah? So easy to do all of that, but we're going to feed our spirit man. Again, the first point was it will bring a spirit of release upon your life and also on your family. Another thing that changes uh, while we're fasting is that there will also come a spirit of restoration. Of restoration. Now, the biblical meaning of the word restoration is to re receive back more than what was lost at the point in the final state will be greater than the original condition. See, the main point is that someone or something is improved beyond measure. Unlike the regular dictionary meaning of the word restoration, which simply means to return something back to its original condition, the biblical definition of the word has a greater and deeper meaning that goes way above and beyond the typical everyday usage. Repeatedly through the Bible, God blesses people for their faith. He blesses people when they go through the hardships. And he blesses them by making up for the losses and giving them more than what they previously had. Someone say restoration. I'll speak for you. You need some restoration. I need some restoration. I want everything back that the devil stole from me. I want it back plus. Come on, interest. My interest rate is, 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 is high, devil. I don't just want to break even. I got a high interest rate. My interest rate is 100%. Come on, son, you ain't hearing me. Joel 2.25 simply says this. God says, I will make up for the years that the locusts have devastated you. The locusts, the savages, the deadly, the fierce locusts. My God, he's just picking on the locusts. The great locust invasion that I'll make up for the years that they have invaded you. I will make up for what they have taken from you. He goes on to say, never again all of my people will ever be despised. You'll, you'll know without question that I'm in the thick of your life. He goes on to say that I am your God, yes, your God, the one and only real God. And then he, then he, then he ends, the, ends the scripture with this. He says, never again will my people be despised. So there's going to be, I, I speak this over you today. I prophesy this over you. I'm not a prophet, but I'm, I am right now at this second. I prophesy restoration upon you right now. Whatever you have, you have lost or whatever the enemy has taken, whether it be time, people, money, a career, you fill in the blank. Whatever you feel that, man, the enemy got me there. Oh, he came in and he sure got me there. I, could, I wish I could go back and get that. I wish I could go back 10 years. I wish I could go back 20 years. Oh, that I surely, I surely missed that. Oh, my life would be different. No, no, no. God is telling you, Victory Outreach today, if you will honor me in praying and fasting, if you will honor me in this area, if you will just come on somebody, a uh, 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 partner with the church here today, he says, I'm about to restore some things that the devil took from you. He says, never again will you be despised for that. Never again will you be remembered for that. Never again will, you, will that hurt you like it once hurt you. 
The enemy stolen some things from some people in this sanctuary. Yet, for those who seek God through fasting, there will come a spirit of restoration upon your life. You'll see a restoration of your health, restoration of your marriage, and restoration of your family. Come on, somebody. Ooh, Lord. Restoration. I feel the Lord restored some health in my life. It was right before 2022. I was like, probably 2019, babe, 2017, 18, 19. Something like that, where I was getting hit with anxiety like bad. And I would wake up at like 1 in the morning, 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning. And I would just like wake up like I couldn't breathe. And uh, like, I don't know what taking your last breath feels like, but it sure felt like, oh, I would wake up like that. And I would like sit up and I would feel for my wife. Feel for, you know, and then serenity always ends up in our bed somehow. And like, oh, God, okay. And then it was so, it was so much. Fear and anxiety, it was overtaking me. I had to see if they were breathing. I was like, oh, it's like, okay, now go check all the rooms. It's weird. Now I go downstairs, and then I turned on some prayer music, and I just felt like I was losing sleep. I felt, I felt, I felt like I was just getting hit. And so finally I went to see, went to see a doctor. And the doctor says, well, you have sleep apnea. So we're going to hook you up with, uh, with something to help you, and your insurance that you have doesn't cover the hybrid version of the sleep apnea machine, so take this one. And I took it home and I, you know, charged it in the wall and put it on and serenity. She was probably five then. She looked at me and she goes, she's all laughing. Ah. I go, what? She goes, you look like you're flying an airplane. Like, <laughs> it was a big one. Like, it almost looked like a helmet. Now, if you're on it, that's fine, you know, for help, whatever. I'm not poking fun at it. I'm just saying what, what, what it was for me. So then I'm like, I felt embarrassed. I'm like, oh, God, she's clowning me. My little five-year-old daughter's clowning me. So I, gotta, I took it off. And then I go, babe, I'm not going to wear it. And then she's like, you got to wear it. And we went through this whole thing. The next day I took it back to the doctor. I said, I, I, I can't wear this thing, man. Like, like what, what do I need to do? And he said, well, you got to get healthy. I said, well, I'm feeling what I do for the anxiety. He goes, well, start here. Start, start exercising. Start eating better and all this whole thing. So, um, so, so, so as I did, I got on, you know, anyway, high blood pressure pills. Fast forward till now. I went about a month ago to get checked up, my one-year checkup, and they uh, took my high blood pressure again, and the, uh, my doctor tells me, you have the high blood pressure of a 14-year-old. I go, but I'm 55. She goes, that don't matter. Outside your fit, this is a doctor that doesn't know my God. She says, I know what your outside says, but what your inside says is that you got the heartbeat and the blood pressure of a 14-year-old. Come on, somebody. So God will, I, I took that as, as fasting. I took that as taking course, taking care of yourself. But I speak that over you today because some of us, you could have the same report. God wants to give you that same thing. Come on, somebody, be, 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 because you're, you're in this fasting as a part of your life. So why is this important? And, and I'm going to just say these things and then move on to my next point. I'm going a little longer than I wanted to here today. We still got to have this altar call. But why is it important? Because I feel, I feel, I feel fasting is so important because uh, there's a lot of sometimes carelessness in the house of God. There's a lot of careless living in the house of God. There's a lot of sloppiness in the house of God. There's a lot of waywardness in the house of God. Can I just say it like this, like I want to say it? There's a lot of sin in the house of God. And there's a lot of disregard for God. Fasting aligns us with God and aligns our life back with Him so that we get the restoration. Third point and last point here today. I don't got a lot, but I'm, I'm done here, okay? There will be a spirit of reward. There will be a spirit of reward. This is a good one right here. Spirit, God rewards it. God will reward what you do in secret. God will reward it. That's why I said earlier, when we fast, we don't like put it out there and, you know, let everybody know, although they'll find out because we're doing it corporately. But, like, it's the secret. Listen to me. It's the secret nobody sees, but it has results everyone wants. Because there's a reward behind it. 
Hebrews 11.6 says, God is a rewarder of those who seek him. He rewards them who seek him. For those who seek him through fasting and prayer, there is a reward. Come on, somebody. A reward. Like, like not an award, but a reward. I want a reward. My wife was on the phone a few days ago with one of the airlines trying to get our rewards. And she was on there for a long time. Like talking to five different people. Because this sister was not going to miss out on her reward. No, we need our reward. No, uh, this is my name, his name, this, that. I want my reward. Come on, somebody. Imagine if we got like that with God and said, I'm going to pray, I'm going to fast. I'm going to jump on this. You got maybe 18 or 19. I don't know how many more days we got left. All the way up until Fresh Wednesday, February 7th, you do the math. Come on, somebody. But there is time to get on this Daniel fast. Fruit and vegetables. Come on, somebody. No, 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 no sweets, no treats, no breads. Oh, Lord, I know. But it's okay because God's going to reward you for it. There's some good stuff out there. There is good stuff out there. There is some good, I don't feel like I'm missing out yet. I got some Ezekiel bread I ate last night. Apparently, you could eat it. It's like $7 for a loaf of bread, but it was worth it to me. I put it in the toaster. I put some peanut butter on it. Put a bananas on it. Put some honey. Because I had a sweet tooth. How many have sweet tooth? That, 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 yeah, that, that, that late night sweet tooth? I, oh, Jesus. I, I, my go-to now is peanut butter and jelly. With some chocolate milk. That's like my go to. That's when my wife goes, Oh, you're getting dirty. She goes, Oh, you're getting dirty. I go, Yeah. I'm in one of my moods. I need to have this. Is, I need this. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. We all got that go to, right? Well, my go to is now Ezekiel bread with peanut butter, banana, and honey. Now, is it the most tasting thing in the world? Well, yeah. Uh, probably in about 10 more days, it won't. But God's going to reward it. God's going to reward it. God's going to reward. God's going to reward you, my brother and my sister. God is going to bless you for it. I don't know how he will. I don't know how he's going to do it. I'm not sure of his plan for your life. But I'm telling you, if you step out in faith and if you just jump on with us here, you're not alone. You're not by yourself. And if you fall, get back up, dust yourself off, and get back in the flow of things. You know, you're going to have some ups. You're going to have some downs. Your flesh does not want you to fast. Your flesh does not welcome a fast. Your flesh does not want you to separate your life. The devil does not want you to fast. Tomorrow, if you decide today that you're going to do it tomorrow, guess what? That heathen that never buys lunch, that person, that stingiest person at work is going to come through tomorrow and want to bring you a breakfast burrito with all the fixings, and you're going to know that's an attack from the enemy. You're going to say, get behind me, Satan, because you never want to buy me any food. But now that I'm choosing to, and when you fast, I'm going to tell you, time goes by slow sometimes. Oh. God. Whew, what time is it? 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh my God. Like, can this day hurry up? And, you know, like, can the days get shorter? I like fasting when it gets darker faster, but it still doesn't matter because the days are still long. Lord have mercy. But, you know, um, let me get, just give you this and we're done. I, I, went, I went too long already. So, so, as a part of God rewarding you, our job is to proclaim during these times. Proclaim your finances to get better. Proclaim a healing upon your body. Proclaim freedom over your life. Proclaim restoration over your life. Do not limit God, but let this time be your time. I want us to understand that when we fast, we are not twisting God's arm. We are not positioning ourselves, we are, we, are, we are simply positioning ourselves and preparing our hearts. Fasting is not like a magic wand or a magic formula, but it is simply a sacrifice in the physical that attracts and it brings a reaction from God in the spiritual realm. So 
even if I've laid it all out here today and you are like, I am not, I'm good. Thank you for that information today. I am so thankful that you gave me all of that great, healthy, spiritual, you know, stuff today. Um, but I'm good. That's fine. You know, that's, that's okay. But you watch us do it. Watch and see the miracle territory that we all walk into. Come on, somebody. As we begin these next few weeks that we have left in the area of praying and fasting. So what I want to do now is shift real quick into another gear and get the ushers ready for today because like I made mention earlier, we left the spares, we left the stairs raw and bare today for a reason before we carpet them because I want to I want I, I want you to be able to put your promise or prayer request or something on here before we carpet them that only you and God know. And we're going to believe God all the time, every, all the time from here on out. Whenever we look at the steps, we're going to just pray for them. Because as others come later on down the years and they see these steps, they won't know what's under them, but you will. And we're going to believe God through praying and fasting that every one of these prayer requests will be answered. Okay? So I want you to stand with us here today. I want to position the worship team here this, this morning. And there are a lot of pins in here. So when you get done with the pin, okay, you can just leave it on the step. And then the next person will come up and, and use it and then just leave it on the step. And then you can just walk back to your seat. And then once everyone's done, we're going to kind of conclude, okay? So that's, that's, that's the vibe this morning. So praying and fasting, and now we're going to believe God for a miracle. There's some miracle steps here, okay? So they're going to begin to minister. Go ahead. The ushers will go ahead and take over now. To be a so just follow their lead. They'll lead you. Pure and holy, tried and true. Write a promise. With thanksgiving. Write a family member. I'll be a living. A prayer request. Say. Yeah. 